with Josh and a few others, Daniel Diaz. But oh, nice. welcome to the Retro Ranger Wrap Up presented by the Illuminary right here on that hashtag show. I am back in the saddle for one week only. It's possibly I might be back next week too. Uh, but I'm gonna be what? Yeah, he shows up and he's like, you know. I show up when I want to show up. <laughs> See, I do what I want to do. Look at that. Yeah, and you guys much. are going to like it. <laughs> it's um, true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. But thank you guys so much for joining us this Sunday, beautiful Sunday afternoon right here in sunny Southern California. We welcome you to join us right here. Uh, we're going to be talking about three episodes this week on Power Rangers Turbo. First yes. of all, before we get into that, I am Joe. This is Daniel. And that beautiful red princess is Elle. <laughs> Uh, you've been drinking a lot today, I can see. Not a whole lot. You know, it's the worst thing. Like, if you ever told your parents, like, hey, you know, I, I'm not drunk, I'm not drinking, they could clearly see that you're but lying. I turned this Maybe. red even with a sip. Yeah, just with a sip. True like, story. What are we drinking tonight? Well, the I'm not blur. My words. Let me just oh, tell you. Oh, well. We are sponsored right here by Bud Light, and we are also no, drinking not. scotch. <laughs> but, uh, well, that's <laughs> called pandering. No, no, we're not. No, we're not. Pander to the audience. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining us in the chat. Uh, you can be anywhere, but you're here with us. But right now, that's, uh, that's still that from Jay-Z. That's not, Steve stole that from Jay-Z, didn't he? Oh, no, that's it. What? Hey, you drink one? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about three episodes tonight, and we're right on the eve, the eve of Passing of the Torch. That'll be next week. I'm super excited. Here. That's why, like, when you said five episodes, nah, let's just save it. Passing yeah, of the huh, Torch. But sure, that makes sense. Right now, we, we, have th we have three episodes to get through, but Power Rangers Turbo, the reason I, I wanted to ask you guys, I haven't, I've, don't think I've done a turbo episode. No, you, you have no, you not. have not. So I feel like Tommy because he phones it in. Oh, but um, let me ask you guys: What do you guys feel about uh, Power Rangers Turbo so far? This has been the weakest season in my opinion thus far. I haven't seen everything, but man, the fact that they pulled in Justin automatically like minus five thousand. Oh points. God! Like really for what? Uh, there's moments where we look at Justin and we automatically now. Hey Justin, just as much as Cat. Yeah, even more, so, <laughs> even more so. And like, the worst thing I feel like the villain in this one, Diva Talks, is not compelling. She sends down detonators when she has monsters that can wreak havoc on Angel Grove, and it's like, let's put this detonator to blow up one car or one building or like. Do you think? Ugh, it's here, just really weak. Really Real question here: Do you think if uh, Angel Grove uh, happened during the social media era? there would be some, like, GoFundMes for people's houses getting destroyed? I'm sure there will be, but I also feel like they don't have to rely on Demetria and Alpha 6. They'll just, like, look at their Twitter and be like, oh, stuff's going down, and they would be more informed quicker than what Demetria or Alpha 6 will tell them. Yeah, I agree. It's, yeah. They're not doing their job very well, but Zardin also phoned it in for, like, the last... One thing... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Not even One there. thing yeah. that, I, 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 that resonates the most with Power Rangers Turbo, this era to me, is that... You can almost tell that Jason David Frank is on his way out because he's yeah. not necessarily physically in a lot of the episodes. He's yeah. not, and he's, yeah. if he is, it's only like a quick thing like, hey, we need you really quick. All right, we're going to morph and drive our car. That sounds like me here at that hashtag show, guys, <laughs> yeah. does it not? Good it job, really does. Tommy. Yeah, we're going to go, Tommy. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining us in the chat. Uh, we want to get you guys, more of you guys engaged with all these retro episodes because not only are we on the eve of Passing of the Torch, we're very close to Power Rangers in Space, and there's going to be a third person joining this show uh, for Power Rangers in Space uh -huh. that has never really experienced Power Rangers Ooh. before. And that's going to be Josh because he's a sci-fi guy. Nice. And I think it's a great transition, but, but we do have three episodes to get through. With that being said... Catch me up on what you guys have been up to for this week so the so the people at home can know that you are real people and you do real things. We do, do real things. Yeah. Um, I learned walking around Long Beach. Every year they have this thing called uh, Pow Wow Long Beach and they do murals um, in the city. That's super oh. interesting. Uh, they've been doing it since 2015, so it's pretty cool. Also went to an Obone Festival. Which what does is, that even mean? Yeah, that say, is, is that? Domino's uh, tournament? No, it is actually Day of the Dead for Japanese people, so everyone gets together, celebrates, like dances, and has this festival, Good. and it's, yeah, Day of the Dead, but for yeah. Japanese people. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I did, um, uh, last night I went out drinking with Johnny and Josh, and my girlfriend, and like a few of our other friends. Uh, randomly, one of our fans showed up, Daniel Diaz showed up, Nice. Like complete random, complete Wait, random. Really? Like, yeah. random How about yeah, I, yeah, it was complete accident. By the way, where we did you guys up, go drinking? Uh, in in uh, off of El Segundo, there's a couple breweries there. Oh, okay. So we nice. just hung out there for a little bit, played some dominoes, uh, played heads up. Nice. You know, j uh, by the way, here's a pulling the curtain back. Last we won. 
Last Friday, well, you won one of the games. Yeah. Last Friday, we had a, we like a bunch of us were together. It was me, L, Daniel, Johnny, uh, Johnny Shay, Josh, uh, somebody else. Justin. Justin. Yeah. Keys, keys on. Uh, we were all here, and we were going through a meeting. But then Johnny, of course, at the end of close of every meeting, it, b the meetings are filled with full of alcohol. Oh yeah. But of close of every meeting, Johnny's like, "Hey, let's do one of these." Yeah. And it's like we play this heads up game, and yeah, it's well, a lot of fun. Ours was hard. So the one that we lost was incredibly difficult. I don't know who I it Carly was, is. It I don't was. know who Underpants Man is. Yeah, yeah, Captain Underpants I'm... and uh, I Carly. Hard. It's hard to point those out. It's hard, man. I'm sorry. I'm no. not hip. <laughs> I don't know if that's like yeah. a younger generation's thing, or I just missed it on my... Nah, nah, it's like that. So, with, with Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers really sets stage for the world building of the universe, yes. but then we get Power Rangers Zeal, which really goes deep into the really characters. Good. That was really, really good. That was really good. But yeah. Zeal goes deep into the characters, but then we also have, what is Power Rangers Turbo? If you had to like kind of quantify it into something, a regression of a everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, it feels it was a placeholder. It feels almost like it went backwards. A comedy, yeah. yeah, right. And it should have been. And based off of like the original Sentai footage that um, oh, we heard about, yeah. it was supposed yeah. to be very tongue in cheek, very yeah, kind of was. campy, it very like ridiculous. Was. And um, yeah, American decided America decided to pick that season and try to make it into a serious drama uh, and, and make a movie of it. Oh, like, that movie was weak too. That movie was absolutely trash. Oh my god. Um, yeah, but before we get into talking to the three, three these three episodes, I want to talk to you guys about convention season. We are in the midst of it right now. D23 yes. is coming up. Long Beach Comic Con, LA Comic Con, and I'm sure Comic Cons wherever what city whatever city you're in. There's Comic Cons all over the world. Yes. But go to Comic Cons in style with some of our T-shirts at the T Public Store. Especially if you're a Power Ranger fan, we don't cater to the Mighty Morphin era. We do have shirts from other seasons, but they are mashed up with movies. So check those out on our T Public store, right there below. You can get yours. The, and <coughs> can you guys guess which one of those Ranger shirts is the highest selling? Oh, the, the Shattered Grid one's not in there though. Oh, it's not. Oh well, well. Star Wars. The, I thought the. I thought it's the not actually. Grid it's the Once a Ranger shirt actually. I thought the Shattered oh. Grid was. The Shattered Grid, my, they're very close. Those two are very close. But yeah, get your shirts right there. The description or the link is in the description below. Check it out. Go get yourself a Power Rangers shirt and wear it proud. Elle has her own shirt. Daniel has his own shirt. Yeah. Yep. You can also support them by uh, getting those shirts there as well. And also, just to let you guys know, we have the Super Chat feature. That also helps support the show. And it keeps the lights on right here at that hashtag show. But if you want to go even further and really support some Power Ranger culture, check out our Cosmic Protectors Patreon. Um, that is something else we're doing. We're working hard at that. That's presented by the Illuminati, and we are doing something completely different. It's a Power Rangers motion comic that's also an, also an audio drama, oh, yeah. and we're bringing back Rangers from past seasons. And I'm sure that he doesn't have the picture of that we were that I sent you guys in the no. Slack today, but um, I didn't know we were going to release it up here. Oh okay. yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, we can. We can uh, but if you want to check out our Patreon, we will definitely be posting that on there for you guys to see. Um, if you want to be one of our Patreons and actually subscribe to, I think it's the second or third tier. Third tier? Third tier. Third tier. Um, you will get a color version of that particular image. Oh, That's right. And yeah. also, we're teasing this right now. This is confirmed today. Mm -hmm. uh, Jezzer, myself, Daniel, and Josh are in a, in a text chain. Uh, we were going to hold off on this, but next Saturday on the Ranger Wrap-Up, we will have a mystery guest coming in studio. Um, and listen, if you're one of the patron, Patreons, patrons? Patrons? If you're one of the patrons... Uh, you can ask a fan question to this guest, and that's going to air in one of our Morphin Mondays. Yeah. But they so, need to know who this guest is, how do they find out, and what question to well, ask. They will find, yeah, it's a great point. They will find that out if you follow us, our Instagram page at, nice. at uh, Cosmic Protectors. Check out our Instagram page, all the information's there. Go give it a like, go check it out, and uh, you're going to be able to do that. Now, if you want to sign up for the Patreon, the link is in the chat right now. All you guys are looking at it, it's in the chat. Blur to answer your question, can I order a a print to place on a bigger size t-shirt, you absolutely yeah, can. can. You absolutely can. But I want to thank you guys for joining us in the chat. We got Matt, Mikey Perez, Matthew Thompson, The Blur, Nasty, Norgi, uh, Donnie Pearson, Josh Goldman, Larry Newbill. Thank you so much. Larry Newbill is also a Patreon supporter. So and thank you so much. These, this awesome shirt. I should have worn mine today so we could have been twinsies. Oh, so I, 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 wonder, I was like, I wonder if she's going to. I'm just trying yes. it out. Yes, The Blur, uh, you are a Patreon member, so you will definitely, definitely be able to get in on that uh, that video question that you can ask uh, this Power Ranger actor. 
Yeah. So that'll be that'll be a lot we of fun. We will be making a post. Make sure to go onto our Instagram page. Um, give us a follow. We just started it up. We're gonna be making posts all week long. So stay tuned. I guess stay tuned on all of our social medias. Yeah. Yes. So you'll find out. But I want to get into our first episode right now. It is Cars Attacks. This episode is written by Douglas Sloan and directed by Chip Lynn. Mm. Chip Lynn, the executive producer for Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Currently. and most of most of the uh, most of the seasons here in the Neo Saban era. Yeah. But let's get right into it. Um, first of all, let's get some comments. What do you guys? What do you guys think about this episode? Where does the blue centurion come from? Where does he live? Where does he go when he disappears? Where, and yeah, how does he like, show up? Where yeah, does he like, get this information? I, what, I do what, what's know. going on with this character? I've been trying to figure it out for the last couple weeks, and I am still confuzzled. I, I don't get it, because I'm like, all right, you showed up from the future to the give message. us the millennial message. Yeah. Why are you still here? And you just stuck around, and now <laughs> like, are you one of Earth's... Protectors, along with the power along with the Rangers, because like, there's laws in this country, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mean, that's why Jether loves him so much. Helmet, so I mean, I guess. Uh, yeah, oh my God, the fly goes in the room. Yeah. Everything for him. So oh, one thing that, um, right, if you if you're a reader of the Boom Studios comics that are happening, the Power Rangers Boom Studios comics, then there was a uh, back. What are they called? A companion mm -hmm. uh, story okay. that went along, and that was the Blue Centurion and Ninja, actually. Wow. Okay, um, so Ninja, at least that made sense. Like he goes to his little flower pot at the end of every episode or whatever. Yeah, he so comes out when he's the Blue needed, Centurion but... actually has a family too. Like this robot family is like a detective. Oh. It's it's very bizarre. Is it part of the Machine Empire? I feel like I he would have been like 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 That's like the one. like yeah. policing the Machine Empire. Mm -hmm. I could co totally see that. Yeah, it would make a lot of sense. Ha hashtag Cosmic Protectors. Um, <laughs> But yeah, he is from another planet. He's actually uh, considered a space, like kind of like a space cop. Interesting. But back in Power Rangers Ninja Steel, we also had Skyfire, the Sheriff Skyfire, mm -hmm. which was also the same kind of thing. Um, we already got a super chat, guys. I liked Cat and Tommy, mm, the Cat and Tanya's moment in this episode. Oh yeah, mm. I like actually Tanya uh -huh. is like. Uh -huh. The most underrated character, I feel like everyone has their favorites, but like she's a standout next to Adam. Her and Adam. Yeah, her and Adam, I, I can go for that. Yeah. Those two are the ones really that I do care about. Everybody else is kind of like, mm, I'm alright, I'm alright, I'm alright. I mean, the Tommy is just Tommy, you know? Yeah. So. Wait, who gave us that super chat? Oh, that was the Blur. It's What's also, up, blur? the Blur is also a patron. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you for being a patron and supporting us as we try to start up this project. Yeah, yep. those August rewards are coming out very soon. Very so, soon. also. Um, if you want to check out, if you, you listen, we're not even asking for you guys to, to, to support the Patreon. Just check it out. Yeah, just go in there and check it out project. first. We are doing it all on our own, but if you want to support us to help us get better gear, to like upgrade the issues as we go along, we would definitely appreciate and it. And we're making a lot of progress with that, guys. Oh, yeah, we are. We are doing yeah, more are. voice recording soon, so. Mm -hmm. We are. Super excited Jessica about just that. scheduled her days. Kelly just scheduled her days. It's got the preview image, so. The what? The preview image. Oh, preview image. You know what? So for all of you patrons out there, uh, we're going to show you guys just a piece of what we're doing. This is a character design of the Purple Ranger. This is Daniel, actually. So um, check it out. Check out this quick preview, and, and then uh, we can comment on it. This uh, Our artist is Daniel Kirshner. Small preview. Well, that's a really... Oh, I was talking yeah. about the purple one that I put in Slack. No, that's fine. But that's the, fine. I like the sketch one. Yeah. I feel like... So, I mean, we, we could show those. them... I mean, we show them, a bit, uh, like, the actual preview of it. The whole thing? It, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because, I mean... Well, that we're going to put it up on our Patreon page anyway if you want to check that out or if you want to show your friends after... Uh, this episode airs definitely and it's also up on our on our it's, it's going to be up on our instagram page too uh yes we are basing this off the q ranger season so uh, those of you yes. that are familiar with uh I mean, sentai those, I, I see you, you caught the intensity in my eyes and i felt it i could see it i really think we caught the uh the the area between your teeth the, the middle well, one. Uh, you know well uh <laughs> see the thing is it, it's there because yeah. i have such a powerful tongue 100 yeah, you know that's why yeah. and that's why i have the gas i think i think what, yeah. what yeah. it's really there for is for you to whistle without using like my you know, fingers yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Just blowing it to your teeth jealousy it sounds so it is. bad it sounds so bad <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a great whistler that's that's I'm the whole point um but anyway yes this is this is uh on patreon go check us out cosmic protectors now back to the episode Cars, attack. on, cars attacks. So we don't know where the blue centurion really comes from, but that is one of my like biggest questions that I have, and also like, why does Alpha Six talk like the way he does? Also, um, hey, we got a new person that we just met that apparently Jenny! disappeared into the void of one-time appearances. <laughs> okay, I, really, I love this. <laughs> I really thought that Jenny was going to be kind of like Carlos and kind of be like that, you know, a difficult personality to work with, but comes around and learns how to be a ranger. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I actually looked it up to see if she was going to be one of the replacements for mm -hmm, that. Because mm -hmm. it's like she's kind of sassy, and it's like she might get a better yeah, attitude. Something. And you know, having like uh, Lieutenant Stone being her uncle maybe has some like insight on some things. It could be like more of a tactical person. No, apparently she just ups and leaves. 
yeah. after this episode. I'm yeah, actually I, well, really disappointed. I, I think maybe she did have something to do with the money missing in the safe because she's gone. <laughs> story, story, story pretty much gets dropped with her immediately. And I, and yeah. I feel like, I feel like the, this is the one thing that I did like about Zio, and I think they regress here in Turbo, yes. mm-hmm. is that... We got these ancillary characters that are kind of th- that are built out to help build the world, and they keep yes. coming back every so right. often, or you'll see them in other episodes. Right. And... and I think that this is a wasted opportunity. Somebody with Jenny, another character that kind of oh. got dropped, Veronica, Angela, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Like, once again, they were building you, them a lot. In... Tommy's brother, the David void, Chuhart. the yeah. void of like, hey, one and done. Like we saw you, we had something happen to you. I mean, once the story is done, we we'll never see you. Again. Let's talk yeah. about this for a second now. Do you think that somewhere in the writer's room that there's a tonal shift mainly because they get the Sentai footage and like, well, this season's Car Ranger or Turbo Ranger, whatever it was called in Super Sentai, is a little bit more goofy. We have to kind of adapt it to fit that. Or do you think they say, you know what, maybe Zeal was getting a little bit too uh, outside of outside of the age range we wanted. We need to bring the kids back into this. Which one is it? I don't know. I feel like it has to bring the kids back, which is why yeah. they thought to bring Justin in in the first place. But that was the most terrible move they could have done. It was the worst like, way to it, do it. it was yeah, the worst it way regressed. To do it. And especially if they wanted to be more comedic, like Rocky would have been the perfect character for this particular season if you wanted to have more comedy, more like slapstick and any but of that. But the thing is, we already have Bulk and Skull. Let them go ahead and do but their they're job. They're monkeys. They're, they're kids and were they, still not, were they still not comedic relief? They Everything are, they but you don't get as much. Like I feel like uh-huh. even the stories for Bulk and Skull are incredibly weak. It's all about sure. like, how are we going to prove we're humans? And like, it's well, just but, like I mean, but we could have, we still could have, we still could have gone ahead and built up those random antics because that's but exactly they what they are. And would would have allowed us to be, be able to build our characters and do something better with the Rangers, still having your stupid slapstick with everything else. Do you like you know that would have been like great for me. Do you guys never do that? Do you guys think though that uh, that some of these characters that we get introduced are, are kind of wasted here in Turbo? Like Jenny and and, and yeah. I mean and another thing well, too. Well, la- last week we got Carlos and we got Ashley and right. they're going to they're going come to in. Amazing. So like yeah. that makes sense. And I was actually surprised that we didn't see him in this episode in some capacity. So yeah. it made me think that like oh. Unless they're trying to do the red herring and like introduce Jenny, like, oh, she might be a ranger. Guess what? She's not. We're going to yep. completely cut her out, fold you guys. Yep. Another thing, too, is that you could tell that the originals, Tommy, uh, uh, Bulk Skull, they are, it's just their voices at this point now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, not, we're not actually yeah, we're getting not them. Seeing them. But also, the, the natural transition here would have been to let Adam become the leader. I really wanted Adam to become the leader. I feel like he is. Even though he doesn't have a whole lot of lines and they don't build him up a lot to be like the dominant leader, like oh, yeah. I feel like he is a fan favorite. Like a lot of people have to love Adam. He is. I man, there's just so many things about this episode or just a season that are just confusing or upsetting or just why. It's like the big question of why. Like the whole thing with introducing Lieutenant Stone's uh, niece made no sense. None at all. I know, uh, but nothing it's kinda... happened that made any stakes or made us even care. And then you gave her this big moment where she says the whole thing about like, um, uh, what did she say? Oh, well, my my mom doesn't want me. My uncle thinks I'm stealing. And and now uh, and now you know the Rangers break in and throw my cassette tape and blow it up. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. you know my whole life is ruined here. And it was like, dang, I really do feel for. Her. Then after that, it was like, bam, 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 Rangers. And you were like, wait, what? What the hell? I do like Cat's pep talk. This is one of the few times where I actually really did like Cat's role in this episode, where mm-hmm. it's like. She wasn't pandering, and she wasn't, like, trying to make excuses. It was like, hey, you have a bad attitude. We all go through bad stuff. Fix it. And she walks away. And I was like, hey, you know what? Good job, Kat. You're actually kind of giving some solid advice instead of being like, oh, my poor baby. And, like, oh, it's okay. Everything will work out in the end. Here's another question. You brought, you, you, you raise a great point. Do you think, as a character, Kat should have been a little bit more on the bitchy side? Now, but do the Rangers have to be likable to the audience? I feel like they should be in some capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, Kimberly was kind of was a mean girl, and we talked about that a lot when we were yeah. watching Mighty Morphin. But yeah. I still really liked her, and her moments and interactions with people were really good. Like even with Billy, where it's like, I don't want to go diving. Billy doesn't like fish. We're gonna connect we're on this level. But you never see Cat connect with anyone else except for Tommy. So she is mm. really trapped in the writer's box. I, for I this really, one. I really thought on this one she was gonna go ahead and cry and cry over to Tommy once uh, she saw Jenny and Jenny wasn't nice to her. I thought she was gonna be like. <laughs> Tommy, you know, or something yeah. like that. Cause every but Tanya time was there, and even though Tanya's the one that's supporting her, and like apparently lives with her for some reason, even though that whole I don't understand how that works. Up. But <laughs> yeah, like never really confides in Tanya, which is weird. Yeah. If you, if you actually go back, uh, speaking of Adam, if you actually go back, 
to one of the interviews I did, the only interview we actually did with uh, Johnny Ambash, mm -hmm. he actually talks about the reason why he grew his hair out is because he was being prepped to be, the to be the leader. <laughs> and it just never, it just never kind of happened. So when, when Jason David Frank left, they said, you know what, this is a great chance for us to bring in a whole new cast. Right. Uh, where, and it's also, I mean, it's what Saban kind of did. They, they kind of messed it up with Jason David Frank because he became so popular. Yeah. And I think that with Johnny, they didn't want to create another one of those. A, a person that can create so much demand with the franchise, they can just trade them in with new people, mm. kind of keep them under their under their under their under finger, the and, yeah. and and kind of do really it. That's really unfortunate because I feel like Adam's arc didn't really get to develop as much as it should. Yeah, there wasn't enough character development for Adam. I feel that there was like they gave us a little bit of an intro uh, from, and then after that we, we like put him in the background. Like in the beginning, background. they they had a lot of Adam centric episodes. Um, I thought that that he should have been the leader, and they kind of just dropped it off so I'm super sad to know that a change is coming through but I also kind of think we need it at this point like they're not giving Tanya a whole lot they're not giving mm -hmm, Kat a whole lot mm -hmm. it's just best to start over when right? they, and I don't like Justin when they do the lightning collection action figure of Justin are they going to do well, the who? adult body with the little kid's oh, head oh god no but see that's already weird like when we no. when we see it in the show and they're not he's, going to. he's a blue ranger and he mm -hmm. saw as a child's voice and then one episode he's talking to people and it's like why does this grown man yeah, have the voice was, of a ten-year-old? I was wondering why Lieutenant Stone didn't say like when he spoke Justin? to Lizzo. Yeah, like yeah. When he was like, "Are you okay, Justin?" Like it was it's not like so weird. At all. It is, oh. worst cop ever. <laughs> It's terrible. Worst detective ever. Yeah, you Worst couldn't, you couldn't reduce that, you what idiot. Oh my and god! Skull? Like they've been missing for <laughs> they've months. They've been missing and these for months. Just and came he... up out of nowhere. Also, where's all my money? Ernie is bright. Running a juice bar is difficult. Dude, oh my god, that was hilarious when he pointed that out about the whole man. How does Ernie balance the books? He does. Well, because Ernie, That's why he Ernie had to file like yes, bankruptcy and bankruptcy and disappear. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. he faked his death. You know, yeah. that's exactly what he did. Yeah. That's so exactly I'm going to go did. to the chat real, qu <clears throat> real quick and see what they're talking about in here. Chime, they're chiming in. Uh, we got Cyril Moore says Cat is her is their favorite rain, uh, pink ranger. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, keep this. Donnie Pearson says keep this coming. I shall watch. Uh, I shall catch up with y'all after I he unloads his dishwasher. That's great to know. Yeah. Um, Thomas Franco says Adam would have been a badass Red Ranger if he Heck stayed. Yes. Mm -hmm. We also got Tom Craven. Uh, again, Johnny would would have been excellent. I mean, a lot really of people. Johnny does come back, Jared Hodges points out, uh, during the, uh, s the Power Rangers in space and Operation Overdrive. Oh, okay, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so so everybody was really on board with wanting Johnny Young Bosch to stay on. Now, question, is there any positives that you guys did like about the, our first episode that we're talking about, Cars Attacks, which is a play on Mars Attacks? Yeah. I mean, other than Kat's, like, speech, and I feel like she did a really good job and it was way more realistic than being pandering to our, like, guests in this episode... Um, there wasn't a whole lot. I like the heart monster's uh, hair. I thought that was really cool. That really long hair do that he had. But, okay, okay, you know. Okay. It's the first okay. time that I kind of recognize the monster as being something different other than like, I don't know why Diva Talks always is like, hey, a random monster showed up at my door. Instead of having him fight Angel Grove or the Power Rangers, I'm going to give him the detonator and you just put it somewhere. And it's like they have no other task than to put the detonator on one thing or another and it's just like mind-blowingly boring. Yeah. Honestly, I thought Diva Talks, uh, uh, she missed a, uh, a really good option right here to play on the emotions of Jenny and make Jenny evil into her own little evil ranger. But see, that's what Rita would have done, and we see yeah, that a lot. Yeah, but we it's like Rita tried it, do why that? not let her try it? I mean, yeah, eh. but Diva Talks is the weaker villain and doesn't have mastermind plans, and she only it's focuses true. on detonators, and she has all these like pretty powerful monsters true. that just like, all I want you to do is put the detonator, put the detonator down. here. We and have, we're going to spin them off in about five days, so hopefully they won't find it in that amount of time. <laughs> Yeah. Reset that counter and let the music play. Let me get to some uh, <laughs> some notes for this episode. Also, some errors. Uh, errors. When Tommy threw Kat's detonator, Adam called her by name. Clearly, yep. an earshot of the judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they do that a lot. I yeah. mean, I, I, when it comes to Turbo, they stop caring about their identities like almost one hundred percent. Like last week, Justin was like, "These bullies are bullying me. I'm gonna morph right in front of you them." Go, in front of yes, the whole and yes. I, and I was just like, Justin, this uh, is why Zordon is rolling over <laughs> in his tube. Justin, hit him. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, Zordon. Why, why Griller wanted to join up with Diva Talks' crew despite being a successful musician is never quite explained. Yeah. Oh, no. Never. Uh, note, the, uh, this is some of the notes. The episode's title is based on the movie Mars Attacks, which we kind of referenced. This episode marks the last time that Emily was acknowledged. Oh, really? Wow. So Jason is not in here or not dating her, I guess. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's gone. That's it. Leave her home. She's dead. 
Uh, according to the unproduced script, Rangers in Concert, Jenny's original name was Ashley, and she was going to be Kat's successor as the Pink Turbo Ranger. See? Really? Because, so yeah, they, they were mentioned. trying to bring her yeah. in, and especially since Kat's someone talking to her and yep. being like, hey, I think you can get a better attitude, just like I'm assuming whoever replaces Adam is probably Carlos, since he has that relationship with Carlos. This yeah. episode references yeah, a moment Carlos in Zio's sung, uh, song Sung Yellow by... By mentioning Tanya's decision to turn down a record deal and not pursue a singing career for the sake of being a ranger. Yeah. Mm. Also, the music that plays when Kat and Tanya arrive in the audition appeared in uh, Rangers Who Come In uh, Come In From The Gold. I don't remember that. The Rangers oh, Who Come In From The Gold. Gold Ranger episode. Yeah. So, um... Those are all the notes for this episode. I mean, pretty lackluster kind yeah. of overall. For those of you guys in the chat, what, what would you guys rate this? And how about you guys down here? Joe? Um, ah, it's solid one. Yeah. Solid one. Honestly, I feel the same way. Nothing about this episode was redeemable, in my opinion. I don't feel that they did anything as far as growing or in, uh, introducing us to uh, a character that we would care about. I mean, so much so that we never see her again. Um, what happened as far as the growth of the Rangers was not important. The only thing we walked away with from this episode for me was that uh, a cat is going to have to start thinking about a successor. That's it. So, one for me. Yeah, but the, honestly, like, when I was watching this, I would have given it, like, a solid, like, two and a half, like, a 50-50, because I thought Jenny was going to be Kat's successor, and I liked that the way that Kat was already mentoring her, like, not pandering, it was just like, hey, you gotta grow up. If you want people to be your friend, if you want people to respect you, if you want to get anywhere in this world, you can't have a crappy attitude. And I liked that, and it was a moment of clarity for her, so coming away from this, I was like, I really do hope that Jenny has a turnaround, and I hope that she's Kat's replacement. Hmm. And and um, if I didn't know what was happening further on, and I, yeah. you know, but since I do, it does bump it down to a solid one. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. In the Sorry. chat, Mikey Perez gives it a one, uh, and Thomas Franco, 1.5. Um, obviously, you guys are not happy with this episode. I, and I would, this is, I feel like this is kind of what fandom had, had has gone through with some of the Neo Saban eras, like Ninja, Ninja Steel, even though Ninja oh. Steel is not nearly as bad as this was. But... It's almost kind of like you get such a high off of something like MMPR and then and then Zio, then you get Turbo. Yeah. yeah. And and it's just not what the fans kind of wanted at the time. It isn't. There's just so many issues with it, from like the villains, from her henchmen to like the characters and the writing. Like it's it's weak. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. when your plot is empty, so will the rest of your show be. Yeah. I mean, that's honestly it. Before we get into our next episode, uh, our next two, because our it's next a two episodes. Let's talk about it combined. Yes, I want to talk about the Patreon one more time. Mm -hmm. Try to get you guys on board. Again, we're not asking you guys for anything. Just go check it out. If you like what we're doing over there, uh, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Or just spread the word because it's hard. Like if you don't have a lot of finances right now, we oh, completely yeah. understand this is like a self-funded project and it's a passion of ours. But if you can just even share the word so other people that might be interested in it might be able to donate, we would super appreciate it. And speaking of that, I know that there's been a lot of other um, crowd-funded Power Ranger uh, things that have been going on, mm -hmm. and unfortunately for a lot of us and you guys, the fans. Uh, those things haven't come to fruition, no. whether or not they've gotten funded or not. Um, some of them have gotten funded, and you guys still haven't seen them out there. We're not doing that to you guys. What we're what we're doing is we are completely going to do this on our own, regardless. Yeah. It's just having you guys having your guys' support and help uh, means the world to us, and it makes it a lot easier and to come out a lot faster. We are currently in the midst of finishing up the first episode. Um, actually, we're in the midst of like doing the first episode. Yeah. I really should say we're that. We're doing the voiceovers. We got like the art coming through. Right. Like, so yeah. Piece it together. Every week we're gonna have a new character design up. We'll be debuting. I mean, I feel like we should debut it right here on Retro to give somebody to look for something to look forward to. Um, we'll debut it right here on Retro. Uh, every every single Sunday we'll have a new piece of artwork to show you guys. But we would love for you guys to join us over on the Patreon. That's Cosmic Protectors. The link is right there in the chat. Josh put it in there. Um, but it's it's gonna be a lot of fun and it's gonna be a project that we are creating together and um all check out the tiers if you guys are kind of enticed by that check out some of the tiers that you guys may want to contribute to because this is a chance for you guys to be some of the rangers too not only that we're also bringing back rangers from the past to be a part of this now i don't want to build our reputation on this like other things have we're not going to do that um the rangers we're bringing up from the past aren't driving this no they're just they're just characters they're going to be in to... it exactly. yeah. But not just that. Also, some people that are uh, that love the Ranger fandom that you guys may know from other parts of fandoms, like the WWE or like you know, like uh, Overwatch. 
they could be coming on to be a part of this as well, to voicing other characters. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And We're it's not be... making promises right now. We're just trying to get through issue one. But with your exactly support, that. we can definitely make this happen. Yeah. Yes, so spread the word, good people. Now, uh, guys, it brings us to our next couple of episodes. Hey, I shrank the Rangers. Is Part probably... one and two? So yeah. do you think that uh, the season of Power Rangers Turbo was, was just trying to come up with, like, Film parody titles? Uh, it seems like. I mean, everyone is just lining up with uh, just some type of parody title. I mean, every once in a while they will have, like, kind of a play on popular movie titles or, like, sure. TV shows or whatever it might be. But, yeah, this one is pretty blatant. There's even a line from Pulp Fiction in this episode. Really? Where what uh, is it? Alpha 5, Alpha whatever he goes on. Alpha you, 6. Yeah, we have to stop him before, you, he goes you, mi- before he goes medieval on them. And I was oh, like, yeah. wait, what? Like, that's, um, there's no way children are going to get that correlation. What's the deal here? And it was like, ah, oh, well, I guess. That's it. It's a Pixar, does it? It's for the adults. <laughs> yeah, true. It's for the adults. The parents so, got to sit through and watch it while everyone else is just like, yay! What did you guys so think about this one? First initial yeah. reactions. Okay. We've seen the Rangers shrunk before. Uh-huh. I like how all uh-huh. of them are. But then it got, like, super Cronenberg when they're becoming flies, and yes. I was just waiting See. for it to, like... But then their antennas are like little fuzzy, like like pipe cleaners. See, okay, well, let's like, talk about this for a second. So, this episode was written by uh, Shell Danielson, and it was actually directed by uh, David Cronenberg. So, shut up! Was <laughs> no way! No. I was like, there's no way. The he, <laughs> I mean, there's no way he gave him like fuzzy antennas. And I was like, he did what he could with the budget. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> No, it was, it was actually directed by Chip Lynn and, and uh, Koichi Sakamoto. Mm-hmm. Who, Koichi's the big stunt. The, the, he used to do second unit for stunts. But um, this is, I mean, you're right. I think there's, it's interesting because there is that Cronenberg influence, mm-hmm. but it's Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah. Well, see, this is the thing, though. So, yes, we already had the Rangers shrink before. Yes. And it's like, oh, great, this is old hat. No one cares about it. But let's go ahead and introduce a ticking clock that's going to be different, which is the longer they stay small, the more they're turning into insects. So now it's something that builds up the stakes. Now we are like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. It does something. But this is the episode that I was kind of talking about where it's like, Diva Talks has access to these monsters that can really mess up the world. Mm-hmm. And she was like, put the detonator down. I don't care if you, t- you could turn the whole world into flies if you want. And we can easily take over the earth this way. But you know what? I want that detonator that's going to blow up one building that one might not building, have anyone yeah, in it. Exactly. Oh, but man, it was at least a smart beat. plan. It was a smart plan at the beginning where uh, Elgar comes down and they're like, let's attack them and make... We can probably actually kill these two rangers because they can't morph. They can't. If they morph, they give up And Elgar did like and a that really was good job where he was like, I'm going to try to step on them. And I was like, I've been yes, talking about yes, this yes, yes. morphing. Yes. Why? Uh, when you're that big, just uh, smush them a little bit. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was like, bravo. Elgar was, for being an idiot, this dude actually finally had something that went through. Yeah. I liked him in this one. And I loved it. I loved it at first, for that at least. At first. Yeah, the fly thing was kind of weird. <laughs> that was positive. Everybody has a positive on oh, this. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. That's not bad. I mean, this For is... For a two-parter, it's like, hey, why not? This and, is and something that actually has some story to it. It has some little bit of development. And it, se- it seemingly... I remember this when I was a kid originally watching this. I don't really? know why this memory jogs jogs my, 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 uh, my memory, but... Um, I remember this being like part one, like ended, and it was like the mid season finale, and you had to wait months for part two. Mm. Okay, then, I don't think that this was that good where it should have been like a mid season, but, but. The, the reason why, though, is the, the the promotion for the next season was like you knew you were coming back to Honey I Shrunk Ranger part two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I believe that passing of the torch was like the promotion was like new Rangers. Yeah. Like, and it was like oh, a I whole see. new thing. So I remember. This was really early on when I was younger. Um, like Power Ranger message boards were just starting to start, mm-hmm. and people had kind of knew like the names of the new Rangers that were coming. They uh, said Selwyn had gotten cast. It was pretty crazy. Like this is the AOL days. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, it it was obviously a long time of '98, I think. So it's obviously a long time ago, but um, yeah, it's pretty interesting because because this ep- this grouping of episodes in particular is kind of where, and especially for me, because I used to watch Turbo um, like like in the middle of the night because I had a satellite dish. Oh, yeah. And it, we, we would get it we would get it super early, like or like in midnight It's at a specific, or early like 4 o'clock in the morning, like before it would air. Yeah. And I would watch it then, and then and then, was, and like, and then go back to sleep and then go to school. So I knew, <laughs> nice. so I could keep, keep up. Oh, but I remember that this was, this, this was like that era of like, 
okay, this is the Power Rangers changing. I was really excited to see the new Rangers come on. But especially by this point, I feel like in my opinion, where it's like, bye, Justin. Oh yeah, yeah. That was but okay. he's gonna say like, right. Justin's Justin. gonna say out of all of them, and I'm like, damn it, why? Go break your back. Oh jeez. I mean, wow. He that's he look, that's really that is pure annoying. hate for his character, but I get it. His character is one that I, I don't like the way they wrote it. The way they, yeah, <sighs> the way yeah. they write him and everything like that. It's just like, dude. I really hate your character, and it's not your fault, but I just hate your character. Same thing yeah. for Kat. You guys really had time to do something with building these characters, and you chose not to. The whole yeah, way through. It's not the acting, it's the writing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, the saddest part about Kat is that she was in such a great season like Zeo and still got no character development. Yeah. Yes! At all. <laughs> like, all I know about Kat is she was a ballerina, and she's and she was and a she diver. And she wasn't even a ballerina. Like, she was she a wasn't. diver, and yeah. then yeah. randomly... They just <laughs> shot up and gave her this, oh, she can dance. I never would have known that. Never would have known it. Yep. All I knew is that she could swim, and that was it. And but then there's I was like, like a no. lot of ridiculous stuff where it's like blue centurion. Guess what? Uh, uh, having a fly buzzing around you makes you like just randomly like freak what? out. And what an <laughs> anticlimactic six ranger. Seriously, yeah. That's like your, he, yeah. he has the worst. Like I said before, worst cop ever. He has a horrible, horrible arrest record because on this episode he says, "I'm going to arrest you," and I was like, "No, you're not. You're not going to arrest anyone." Yeah. Like. You've never arrested anyone. Yeah. I think actually you ran away from the future. You're like Booster Gold. You're a failure yeah. in the future, yeah, and you came much. in yeah. our time and yeah. be like, "Well, here you go, and I'll save the world." And it's like, no, you still can't do it. You're horrible. Yeah, it's that stumbling and bumbling like oh, character. I it's so weird, but like uh, considering like I talk a lot of trash about Diva Talks on like a lot of these episodes, I was actually kind of scared for the Rangers when she tried to eat them. I was like, that is the most evil thing I've ever seen. Like, not even just killing them. Like, you are going you to consume them. them. Yes. And like with her long, yes, little, that tongue, reptile tongue, and I was like, whoa, this is kind of the darkest thing. Like more so <laughs> than trying to blow them up or like stomp them out of existence or like trying to capture them or make evil copies. She tried mm. to like go to like cannibalism and eat them, and I was like, damn, this yes. got dark really fast. Oh now, do you God. think that when they said we're going to do the Turbo, a Power Ranger movie. Okay. That they're like, you know what? We're going to kick this off with the movie. Kid, people are going to love it. You know, buy the toys. They're going to love this little kid that's going to be the Blue Ranger. It's wish they, fulfillment. They did. They thought that at first. I mean, think about it. Execs had to think that, right? <laughs> they and they're like, the movie we hits. have Larago, and it's this little, like, <laughs> little, like Muppet thing that's going to be They were really around. approaching the kids. They were. The, the, movie, the movie hits theaters, and then kids did not resonate with Justin. Nope. It would have been better served having... Well, I... I Steve Cardenas wanted to leave, so having him as blue wouldn't have made sense. But bringing in another Blue Ranger would have made more sense. Yeah. Or even, look, we already knew that Austin St. John came back for the movie. Why couldn't he be the Blue Ranger? Or if Kim came back and she was like, oh, I have to be blue now? Or like something like mm -hmm. that. Like just something kind of sassy. I don't know if she wanted anything, to stay on or not. Anything. But it's like, Kim's part in that movie. Yep. Like at least Jason at the end was like, hey, we fought this tournament. We won money for some charity. Kim was just and like, I'm going anything. to Vegas. Yeah, yeah, anything, but just. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that they could have done. They decided not to do it. No, I feel we're like going longer. That was the most Sorry, bro. Thing. The first idea, um, though. That was the first idea. Like, okay, hey, we'll go ahead. Uh, and it does the whole thing. It solidifies the idea of anyone can be a ranger. So we're going to put a kid in. And then when the fans see this, they'll continue to watch, hoping that one day we'll do something where you can be the next ranger. Watch the show. You know, like some crap like that. And they realized it didn't work, so they didn't even offer it for the next season. Let me ask you guys a Tony. question, though. Um... With the grouping of episodes that we've gotten in Power Rangers Turbo, looking at it now, is this kind of like, had you not been a part of this show, do you guys think you'd have been out? You'd I would have like, dropped I'm, off I'm kind 100% of done. by... I, 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 I much think did. I would have watched the movie and been like, this looks terrible, and then jumped into like the actual episodes and given it maybe three or four. If I was generous, five. Yeah, I probably yeah. wasn't that generous as a kid. And um, would have been like, Power Rangers is dead. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's exactly what happened to me. The writing well, technically, everything. so when we go to space, space was going to be the last season because this season did was kill so it. Terrible. Mm -hmm. And space was going to be the last season. However, space was so good, they were like, you know, yeah. we're going to keep it going. Um, I mean, I hate to hype up space, but it is a really good season. You did hype up Zeo, and I did love Zeo from the moment True. like the theme music came on. Because it's I was so, like, so it stronger. was so good that rock. Yeah. Because it's just music. stronger than before. Yeah, <laughs> it really was. It was good job, Joe. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about some of the errors in this episode. In part one, the Blue Centurion was back to normal after having the shrink, shrink effect, remove it from his head. But in part two, while shrunk, Blue Centurion makes a nonsensical comment. Like he had when he was uh, shrink a sect with the when he had shrink a sect in his head. Mm -hmm. Part one, 
When Adam and Justin are in the park after the blue, after the blue centurion assisted him th uh, clearing Elgar and other piranatrons out, the blue centurion was blue. When Divatox uh, looks at him through her periscope, he's red. Uh, and also another error. I did not even notice that. That shows yeah. you how closely I paid attention and cared nope. about these particular episodes. Nope. Also another error. When the Rangers managed to in, uh, managed to enlarge back to normal size, uh, or sorry, back uh, back to normal size, thanks to the torpedoes, the process of them turning into insects should technically not have stopped, as the torpedoes only changed size to whoever they hit. Yeah. yeah. Um, now there are some notes here during the production of Turbo. A completely different episode titled Rangers in Concert, which was the previous episode, was originally meant to be the mid-season finale. Um, it was very, it, it would have been focused more not only on Carlos, whose namesake originally was Chavez. Um, Carlos it, is a better name. Carlos Chavez is a better is name. Like, Chavez. But it's like a last name. It would have focused on Carlos and Ashley, who also, her original name was Missy. Um, but also Lieutenant Stone's niece, Jenny, from Cars Attack, she was originally named Ashley. Yeah. Um, as as introduced, Tanya's intern for KAGV named Michael, who was the prototype of TJ. So these would have been the four oh, new Rangers no. originally. That makes sense. No, I get now, as as I well get as having the current Power Rangers fighting the cockroach monster called Rock and Roach, um, at the end of the episode, the Blue Centurion would have been fixed and shows Tommy, Cat, Adam, and Tanya in full millennium mess the, the full millennium message, revealing Michael, Ashley, Carlos, and Missy as the next team who saves the world from the United Alliance of Evil. Uh, but the script was scrapped, and Douglas Sloan and, and Anne Austin were both fired. Um, oh. Oh, what? However, passing of the torch... That's where my boy is going. Yeah, passing wonder, of, the, passing of the torch works on the possibility that the retiring Rangers did see the full Millennium message. Now, Tracy Lynn Cruz and Roger Valesco do not appear part two of this episode, uh, this episode is a pun to 1989's Disney movie, yeah. uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Uh, the final ep uh, final appearance also of Mayor uh, 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 Carrington. Yeah, he doesn't show up a whole lot anyway. No. Like, no one's going to remember him. Also, Bulk and Skull turned back into yeah. humans, oh, but. Uh, but became invisible. They'll next appear in, in the Stitch Witchery. Uh, Justin is only the ranger to appear unmorphed in part two. And it, so that means all these guys are phone, just doing yeah. voice acting Dang. at this point. Yeah. In part two, Diva Talk says, Elgar, uh, you know one of these days, Elgar, one of these days, pow, right to the Ranger, moon. Yeah. This is a Josh reference, actually. This is a reference yeah. to a famous phrase by Ralph Honeymoon. Cramden from uh, the sitcom Honeymooners. You guys would not know that. Only Josh got that. That's the only reason why this note is in here. One day. But yes, um, that that was going to be the four names, or the four characters that were originally going to take. So now I'm super curious to see how this transition is going to be, because I haven't seen the rest of the season. Um, I'm hoping that with this changeover, everything gets a little bit better. And this is why you watch Retro Range Wrap-Up, to get fun facts like that, which you never would have known before. And, and if you also, did, then you did. Also, to remember things like the Piranha Song, or the Piranatron Song. Because that happened. That happened. Did happen. Don't forget it. So, Don't forget. Uh, in the <laughs> chat, what do you guys rank this episode? What do you guys rank this the, these grouping of episodes? Or these parties, oh, two-parters? Um, I don't know. It was kind of ridiculous. I thought it was kind of funny with the flies and the fuzzy antennas. Like, uh -huh. I uh -huh. didn't think it was a good episode, but mm -hmm. it did entertain me. I'm going to give it a solid mm -hmm. two. This episode definitely um, felt like uh, a waste of my time. And because of that, <laughs> I'm dropping it down to still a lot of two. Yeah. Oh, we're trying to smash other him. And I've been parts... waiting for like a giant to just smash the Rangers with their foot but, for how many seasons okay, now? And he's is, only, he's the only one that thought about when it. When he did it, he missed. nothing happened. I mean, all of a sudden, they're in a box. Yeah. I was like, what? I'm going to have to go one and a half, mainly because the Blue Centurion is just so anticlimactic. We, it really is. It's, where is he coming uh, from? What is I his don't purpose? Understand what's, yeah, I don't, I don't get what, it. What, what is going on? But everyone is calling it in. and I'm Such a hodgepodge of and like what? And the thing is, I'm glad that we don't get to see the Megazord a lot. I mean, when really it, it's it just would, like cars coming together. It, and I'm like, it's the weakest Megazord. It almost yes. would have made more sense for Lieutenant Stone to be the Blue Centurion in terms of like the <laughs> Ranger. No, seriously. Because he's already a cop. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Or even Skull or Bolt. You know oh. what I mean? They're already cops. I like, I don't know, like. Make it the like the police ranger or something. You know what I mean? Like. I, there's there's a ton of different things they could have done. But, like, anything, even if, like, Bulk or Skull became the Blue Ranger in Turbo, like, mm -hmm. that would have brought, I feel like, a lot more, like, anyone could be a Ranger. That proves it. They went from bullies to, like, being protectors of, you know, Earth. True. That would have been How cool compelling. of a story is that? Bullies to protectors of the Earth. Yeah. I like it. I like it. 
But yeah, I mean, if you want to tune in for more Turbo next week, we're going to talk about three more episodes. We're going to get into the turnaround, I'm assuming. So it'll be super interesting. We'll be here at 5 o'clock on the YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, and um, just before we close out again, Patreon. Go check it out. Cosmic Protectors Patreon. Um, I'm going to pimp the... I'm going to pimp it out, <laughs> mainly because we really do... We We've really, been working hard on it. We've been working yeah, really hard on it. People and see this. Not only that, but like some like you guys have no idea how much fun it is just to do it. <laughs> but and, uh, and a lot of you guys want to be involved. Like the Blur, he's already a patron, and uh, he wants to be involved in doing it, and that's what you got to do. And look at that. We already got a new patron. We got Matthew Thompson. Thanks so Shout much, out. Matthew. Thank you very much. Luxurious hair. Thank yes, you. Yeah, know, he, has, right? he does have luxurious hair. Yes. But he, he's also, he just joined up the patron. So thank you so much for that. Um, again... So much stuff is going to be coming out. Do we have the full picture, the purple picture that we can put up? Uh, I can give you the, I can, you can throw it on my phone. I think I have it on my so phone. So looking at the scores, though, we do have uh, Mickey Perez. Yeah, why, don't, Mickey why Perez, doesn't he do the scores and he sent it over? Yeah, Mickey Perez did, gave us a uh, two. Uh, Thomas Franco also gave it a two. Uh, Jared Hodges definitely bringing it in with a two. Now, the blur chose not to phone it in and said, I thought it was lackluster for me, so I gave it a zero which is the real score. And um, Leda said uh, 0.5, and that's because I'm not in the mood to be petty. That's scary. You should always be in the mood to be petty. Um, Edward Sanchez gives it a 4. So, man, I, I don't under- Is that a point four? Is that what you meant? That's a 4. Okay. Oh, well, that's scary. Um, but, I mean, I get it if you want to give it that. Maybe because it's pretty much with the finale or blah, blah, and all this. I, I can get that, but still. I, I don't know. It was pretty it seems, interesting. But it seems to be generally low scores. Um, Ever Sanchez did like it, so he gave it a four. Heck, you know, it's your taste. Can't blame you. But yeah, right. so tune in next week. Hopefully the episodes will be better. We'll have more to talk about. It'll be a little oh, more yeah. interesting. Well, we got the passing time. of the torch, which I, I'm really excited yeah, about. I am too. This is our first ever pink uh, Asian pink ranger. Nice. Our first ever uh, red, our first ever leader of the Power Rangers and red ranger that's, bl- that's African American. Nice. Oh, yeah. Um, it's really, it's really changing up what Power Rangers is. You know what? One thing I got to applaud the because sh- I'm going back and watching Mighty Morphin with uh, Stephanie's daughter, and the one thing I got to applaud the show on as a whole is that how inclusive they are and they how ahead really of. They really were big with yeah, diversity, even definitely. if it was like slightly of like, sure. hey, with Yellow Ranger is Asian, so, yeah, right. Black Ranger is black. Yeah, but yeah, even, but even, still. even with that, like, I'm, I'm really, I, even some of the messages that they have. The really themes good. are like about pollution. You know yeah. what I mean? About because they're that they focus on the school life, which I really like yes. about Mighty Morphin. Yes. And it really said like they had homework, they had other things, and it's like you can have you can still save the planet while being a good student. True. They lost that and all this because obviously they all graduated at this point. We have Justin that's like ten. So yeah. here's the thing: Daniel is the first one to get a character design here. Uh, let's check it out. Let's check out Daniel and his super. We're using it in a very human <laughs> manner, and not at, in like a yeah, selling yeah, other people, selling and people. Human trafficking yeah, no human manner. trafficking. Look at also look at Daniel's. I would <laughs> like a civilian like kind of like. Dude, that outfit is sick. Coat. That outfit is sick. Like I look, at it, it's just like you know what, and it's like I get it being also the the purple one. It's like oh, it's very regal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hence the staff. So good, uh, and, and you guys like here on the retro attached? are the first to see this image. Like yes. this has not been released to anyone else ever. So no. if you tune in every Sunday, we should have new images for you. We're going to be yeah. promoting so cosmic protectors it's, every week. Yeah, exactly right. right. So this is going to be, uh, if you want to follow along here, uh, retro is where you're going to get the first penciled images. If you want, if you want to join Patreon, you can get the full color image of that. Is one of the one of the uh, rewards or yes. tiers. It's yeah. one, yeah. one of the tiers. So we do encourage you to go check that out. Daniel looks great as the Purple Ranger. The, again, we're basing this Thank on you. Q Ranger. Yeah, it's a, an ori- completely original story, but sticking to the world. The reason why this was created, and I'm and I have to do a video for Elle because she told me to, because she's our social media manager yeah, on I'm it. I'm going mm-hmm. to be doing that today, and it'll be super interesting. So you can find out a little bit about what caused this like creation where did it come from what's going oh, yeah. on and we'll be releasing that on instagram and probably a bunch of other social media that's stuff. another thing too is a lot of it's not just we're outsourcing all this stuff all of us are actually doing other things about this like mm-hmm. Elle's doing the social media you know johnny's actually the overall editor for for really getting this together josh is directing all the episodes i'm writing all of them mm-hmm. so we all have different roles to play and some of the people that you've seen here on hashtag show like jessica brian yes, kelly i am the commander Daniel, the, I mean, <laughs> the, especially Jessica, Brian, Kelly, Myra, Sarah—they're mm-hmm. all back. They're all coming back. All of them, yeah. To do this big. stuff, 
So it's going to be a lot of fun, and um, like I like I said, it, just keep the, keep watching the progress. You might be on the fence right now. All I'm saying is, stay tuned to that Patreon. Keep looking at the new stuff we're putting out. I almost guarantee you, you're going to join up with us. Uh, but that's going to do it for this uh, episode, guys. Where can people find you on social media? And LT on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I'm Tom Sorga Black uh, on uh, Instagram and Facebook. I don't check Facebook. You can find me at that hashtag Joe on all social media. But if you like these two talking about anything and you are a fan of sci-fi, watch their Doctor Who episode that's coming up right after this. That's a good one. They're going to be talking about what episode, Daniel? Uh, we're going to talk about the, it's the, it's the intro of the uh, it's Cybermen. Cybermen. Um, if any Rise doc- of the Cybermen. Yeah, Rise, yeah, Rise of, the of the Cybermen. It's a two-parter. We're only talking about the first half today. Yep. Next week we'll talk about the second. So join us for that. We're going to be starting in just a few moments. And... Um, just a few moments for all you Doctor Who fans. Don't go anywhere. Keep it right here on that hashtag show. Even if you're not a fan, join in anyway. We want to definitely develop our like Whovian oh, yeah, um, fan Hoovian base, cra- yeah. especially on TH. And you got time to catch up because the show's not really coming back for, for like a year. So yeah. you got a ton of time to catch up. What these two are doing, they're, they're, they're letting you explore the, the journey of Doctor Who. Uh, through their eyes, and it's easy for new fans to jump on. So if you don't know anything about Doctor Who, I encourage you to jump on and join them for the ride. But thank you guys so much for spending your Sunday with us. Um, Daniel, why don't you close us out? Well, thank you guys once again. Like you said, make sure to check out Patreon, patreon.com slash Cosmic Protectors. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Keep up to date with everything trending. In geek pop culture. Illuminati. Bye-bye, guys.